Here's the first problem with explosions. A five kilogram cannonball is loaded into a 300 kilogram cannon. When the cannon is fired, it recoils at five meters per second. What is the cannonball's speed after the explosion? Well, first of all, we're going to assume that neither the cannon nor the cannonball are moving initially. And so we have initial velocities for both of those is zero. This is something that we'll add. So our information is as follows. The mass of the, of the cannonball, M1, is 5 kilograms. That of the cannon, M2, is 300 kilograms. And the velocities of each of them is equal to zero. And finally, after the explosion, we find that the cannon has a velocity V2 prime equal to 5 meters per second. Conservation of momentum for an explosion is given by the equation that we worked out uh, on the last slide. It's m1 plus m2 times the common velocity, and that's equal to the sum of the momenta of the two objects afterwards, m1 v1 prime plus m2 v2 prime. Now, it's worth noting that the velocity of both of the objects prior to the explosion is zero, so the term on the left m1 plus m2 times v just becomes zero. So we're left with zero equals the sum of the two momenta, the final momenta. We can rearrange this by moving one over to the, uh, um, to the left side, and we get m1 v1 prime equals negative m2 v2 prime. Because we're interested in what v1 prime is, that is, this, the velocity of the cannonball, we'll divide both sides by m1. So we end up with v1 prime is equal to negative m2 v2 prime divided by m1. Substituting values from over here, we can see that we have this expression, and we can see that the fives in the numerator from the velocity and the five from the mass of the cannonball in the denominator cancel, leaving us with 300 meters per second. Note that the sign is negative. This implies that the cannonball is going in the opposite direction to the cannon.